Um, hello, can you hear me? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our session today, um, both for our online and on-site participants. It's really great to have you in the room. Uh, for the on-site participants, I hope Addis is treating you well and that uh, you had a good time for those who were able to go to the, uh, to the reception last evening. Today with me, uh, we have a panel that will be sharing um, experiences and reflections on capacity building processes uh, for the creation and management of local solutions for meaningful access in the global south. Uh, the panel is made up of organizations from Bra Brazil, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, and Indonesia, and they have been implementing strategies uh, to promote meaningful access to telecommunication services, um, services, uh, sorry, to telecommunication services uh, through the design of the implementation uh, of community training programs. These initiatives have been promoted by the Association uh, for Progressive Communications and Rhizomatica Communications with support from the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Uh, all the schools um, here represented will be, will be sharing their experiences uh, of the training program, um, experiences and lessons that they have learned since 2020. And to start us off, I would like to welcome the panelists. Um, first, uh, with introductions from those who are on site, and then we'll move to uh, those who are um, to our, to our participant who is online. Uh, so I'll start uh, from my far right. Uh, yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Neo Magoro from the South African School of Community Networks and uh, um, Zenzeleni Networks NPC. Good morning, everyone. My name is Harira Wakili. Um, I work with Center for Information Technology and Development, CETAD in Nigeria. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Rispa Akinyi. I work for a community network based in Nairobi, Kenya, Tunapanda. Glad you're here. Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Gustav. I'm work with uh, Indonesia. Thank you. Bom dia. Meu nome é Adriane Gama. Sou do projeto Saúde e Alegria de Santarém, Pará, Amazônia, Brasil. Um, uh, to our online panel. Uh, panelists, Alessandra. Um. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Uh, it's really great to be here. I'm Alessandra Lustrati, the head of digital development in the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, uh, FCDO. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. I'd like now to bring um, my colleague, Carlos Baca, who will introduce himself and also talk to us about the objective of this panel. Carlos, over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Carlos Baca. I'm here in Mexico, and I am uh, the coordinator of the work package about uh, mentorship and training in this initiative, uh, Blognet initiative uh, from APC and Rizomatica. Um, thank you, Carlos. I think you could, uh, I propose you could speak to the objective of, of the panel as well as um, uh, the, the work that you have been doing uh, in coordinating the schools across the five countries. Thank you. Thanks, Josephine. Uh, are you seeing my, my screen now? Yes. Yes, that's perfect. So, uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, to be in this in this panel, uh, I'm so sorry to I couldn't have uh, the opportunity to be there with you, but I am very happy to uh, to share these experiences uh, with all of, of you because this is a very uh, interesting project and I think the results are, are, are great on the, so far. So I want to share uh, some of the ideas that initially 
move all the uh, things related with the creation of these national schools of community networks. So uh, the project started in uh, 2020, and uh, the main objective of this uh, work package in specific it was to uh, develop a, a training machine to allow uh, the uh, training processes, to allow the capacity building processes in different countries uh, that uh, allows a lot of the uh, of the things that are important to uh, deploy and to maintain and to uh, get uh, some in community that was being sustainable in over time. So uh, it was very important uh, for us since the beginning to uh, understand what are the needs, the training needs in the communities, what are the forms in the communities uh, uh, in which they obtain all the knowledge necessary to, uh, to sustain the life. In, in general, and then how to improve uh, these uh, these ways of life through uh, these uh, capacity building processes. So the project is uh, is uh, it is made possible uh, through the uh, collaboration with FCDO from the UK, and uh, there are five countries who are in this in this in this project. It's Brazil, Indonesia, Kenya. Nigeria and South Africa, and in each of these in, of these countries, we have a, a one mess organization uh, whose representatives are there in in Ethiopia now, and uh, also we have in each of the countries seven micro organizations who have been trained in this in these different uh, projects. I want to highlight in, in different uh, occasions in this in this brief uh, explanation that every uh, school has different pr program, has different uh, uh, ways to do the things, methodo methodo methodological uh, and pedagogies uh, are very different between each other. So uh, in this, I want to, to invite you to uh, read this, this guy. We created a guide that calls uh, technological autonomy as a constellation of experiences. Uh, this this guy is uh, is the, the the main goal of this of this guy is to uh, have um, pro, um, a manual to uh, try to develop contextualized uh, training programs. It's 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 for uh, community networks, but not only for community networks. Is 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 you can use this this guide for different type of uh, training programs you want to develop. And it's based all this experience in one experience that we developed in Mexico 2012, uh, called uh, Tecchio Comunitario, and it is a, pro a training program for uh, technical promoters in Latin America that we now uh, do with, uh, in collaboration with ITU. So you, we can uh, share with you after that, after this, this panel, the access to this uh, guide. And uh, a general overview of the main uh, principles or the main values of this, of this, uh, all of the, that are shared with all the, the schools. Uh, we think that uh, the communications, the technologies, the technological autonomy, the community networks, etc., all of that can uh, be explained like a constellation, like a constellation in which the stars are, uh, you know, in the sky, but uh, they also ha can be interpreted in different ways. Uh, and you know, all the all the cultures have their own uh, interpretation of the skies and the constellation, and we understand also the community network not only as a, a connectivity processes or, or an access processes to the internet, but also a, an organization, organizational and political processes the community organize themselves to make possible different things. And one of these things is maybe to get connected to the internet or this uh, telecommunication services. Uh, training, so, is, is very diverse. Uh, 
uh, you can't uh, we can't have a training programs that it is it, the same for everyone in the planet so uh, we need to to understand the needs to understand the ways of learnings in the communities and then we can uh, you know develop the training programs that can uh, have the specific results that it is needed in each of these of these countries and uh, the well to read this guy is not a, 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 a a recipe that you need to follow each uh, each of the of the parts but it's a reference that you can you can use and uh, the methodology the, the general methodology in, in all of the schools is uh, is inspired in by the uh, participatory action research that it is a very important uh, way of, of of do the 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 research in here in latin america and it have it has uh, different stages and uh, well each of the of the training programs that are now uh, taking place in the uh, national schools of community networks passed to each of these of these different stages we start with with a scenario building to to see what what are happening in, in each of the context then we we analyze this 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 scenario and we think about how to develop the things in in the better way then we are we are now in the in the part of, of act each of the schools uh, are taking place since uh, several months in each of the five countries and then we will have an, a stage of evaluation of these of these processes as i said uh, the schools are taking place in five countries in South Africa, Brazil, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Kenya. And uh, well, it, uh, the people who are there in uh, in Ethiopia can share with you uh, in, in in detail these these experiences. And finally, I want to make an announcement. It is not yet uh, visible, but I I think it, uh, in the next week is weeks we have uh, the launch of this uh, community network learning repository which is one part of these uh, goals that we have for this uh, project to have the opportunity to share materials to share uh, yes the learning materials that can be consulted by the organization by the communities in a very organized way so uh, if you are if there in 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 Addis Ababa, I can uh, ask to the people who are there to maybe uh, write your emails, and we can share with you both the link to the to the guide, and when we launch this this repository, also the link to the repository. And this is all for my part. Uh, thank you very much to be there to be here, and greetings from Mexico. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, that was great um, um, background on how the community network started. Sorry, the community, uh, the School of Community Network started. And thank you for sharing us with us uh, the methodology that was used to come um, uh, to develop the initial um, minding or the initial uh, setting of the programs. I'd like now to hand over to Ale who um, is from the FCDO and have been supporting um, um, the, five, uh, the five schools. And just to hear from her, uh, the perspectives around um, what informed um, or why is um, this an important issue uh, for F FCDO to be supporting. Alessandra, over to you. Thank you so much and good morning again from FCDO London and thank you Carlos for your great presentation. A very difficult act to follow. I don't have poetic slides with constellations like you have. Really fantastic to see all of that. Um, so I just want to say many thanks to the colleagues for inviting me to join this session and of course thanks to the IGF organizers for providing a platform to explore such a crucial topic. As I've been given just five minutes for this, I'll focus only on three key messages to um, sort of take a step back and help frame in this um, sort of overall discussion. 
I will briefly outline how support to community network uh, networks fits strategically within our broader digital development work as UK government, how we are leveraging specifically our digital access program to collaborate with all the partners around this table and beyond to try and help close the digital divide, and what key principles we aim to promote when we support local capacity building for inclusive connectivity. So hopefully that will be a useful kind of scene setter for the rest of the conversation that will follow. So first of all, I'd like to state that capacity building aimed at community networks and other local solutions for meaningful connectivity is absolutely central to our digital development policy and programming approach in the uh, UK FCDO. Our focus is on supporting the inclusive, responsible and sustainable digital transformation of partner countries. And within the specific objective of digital inclusion, the foundational element of local connectivity is the basis for everything else to happen for underserved communities and excluded groups to be able to engage with the digital world and not be left behind. Secondly, we promote digital development through a broad range of policy, strategy and programming initiatives at international and country level. But today, I want to mention specifically the UK Digital Access Programme, or DAP. This is a flagship intervention, quite complex, but in a nutshell, it is focused on catalyzing inclusive, safe and secure digital transformation in five of the countries represented here today, Brazil, Indonesia, Kenya, Nigeria and South Africa, through supporting digital connectivity and skills development, cybersecurity security capacity building and digital entrepreneurship and innovation. When we designed the DAP for almost five years ago, actually, uh, with my colleagues, we conducted in-depth country diagnostics. We looked at the data and then we consulted with communities and stakeholders to gauge what the real gaps were, what was the missing link, especially in terms of the connectivity challenge. We understood that mainstream telecom solutions were clearly not going to push the market frontier enough to serve last mile rural com communities affordably and sustainably. So we looked at alternative and complementary models and we chose to support community networks development through a specific project within the broader DAP, which we co-designed with highly specialized partners like APC and Rhizomatica. That was the start of a great journey, including with the uh, great meso level organizations uh, who are with us today. And uh, um, this takes me to my last point. Uh, so fast forward to 2022, after more than two years of implementation of this project, after several program reviews and looking at evidence of progress, uh, we mm, are convinced that there is real value in following three main principle, principles. The first principle is about scalability versus replicability. There's a bit of an obsession, let's say, on scaling up in the development world. Everything has to be you know, large and reach a critical mass. Well, in some cases, like for community networks, the minimum efficient scale is actually quite low, which is great. It's a good thing because with relatively small investments, but really well targeted, context specific and fully focused on building capacity, the, return, the returns in terms of impact can be really significant. Once the model is demonstrated, including in terms of its adaptability to local conditions, both the technological and organizational knowledge can be disseminated very effectively through the method of the School of Community Networks. And we can see um, what I like to call positive proliferation of meaningful connectivity solutions on the ground. The second principle is about local ownership. As I just say, the models need to be fit for context and well embedded in the local reality. They need to take into account local needs and preferences and what is viable or not in a particular location. For this, strengthening local capacity is essential and leads to a third principle, which is, as you'd expect, sustainability. This is about the community being or becoming autonomous in terms of know-how in establishing and managing their own telecoms network, understanding the interaction with the broader market or what I call the connectivity value chain, developing a business and organizational model that enables them to access appropriate finance, technology, deliver efficient and affordable services to local users. And I could go on and on. So clearly the School of Community Networks has a, you know, as a method has a lot to cover and the audience will hear all about it during the rest of this session. So I'll just conclude by emphasizing that the sustainable approach to promoting meaningful connectivity, fully focused on building local capacity and enabling local adaptation really resonates with our broader strategy in the UK Digital Access Program, where we have, we have generally chosen to bet on technical assistance, training, capacity building on all levels, including also for policies and regulatory frameworks to try and create a more conducive environment 
for digital inclusion. So congratulations to our partners on the great work done so far. I look forward to our continued collaboration um, um, as the digital gap we know is still very wide, but there are sustainable solutions that work and investing in local capacity will amplify the impact of our joint efforts. Thank you. Sandra, a really great points, and um, just for emphasizing on the importance of investing in local capacity building. I'll now bring the conversation to uh, our panelists in the room. Um, and my first question is around, um, we, Carlos uh, shared with us um, the, um, the initial uh, setting for, uh, for the schools of community networks. Uh, what we found that, um, and as in all community networks, is that the programs have to be really context specific. So to now, my panelists, I'd like to hear from you, what has been your experience implementing the national school? Uh, in, in countries, uh, maybe what are some of the challenges that you have faced as well as lessons um, that you have learned? And I think I'll start with Neo and then to Harira, Rispa, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I will start by just um, informing everyone that the digital divide in South Africa actually mirrors the enduring geographic and socioeconomic uh, divide. Many of our rural areas currently do not have access to internet, and even if they do, the rural areas, the people located in these rural areas are paying percent more than people in urban areas. So um, apart from uh, these being the norms of uh, the situation in the country, there's also a high unemployment rate that we are battling with. That also includes the gender-based violence rate, which is also skyrocketing. And with that, data costs are also the highest in, um, in our country. So um, to begin, the curriculum, the development of our curriculum was done by experts who understood the needs and the realities of and what we aim to achieve as community networks. So we base the school's curriculum on four pillars, which are personal development, social development, um, technical development, as well as business development. We felt that these four pillars are actually the starting ground um, of building a community network. And in order to cater for the content that was built, we created an online platform, a learning management system where this content was shared and also a course, a WISP course, wireless internet service provision, which was um, provided in partnership with the University of um, the Val University of Technology um, trained with the traineeship of the human capital learning solutions. So some of the challenges that we've encountered are first being able to communicate with the participants. During the application process, some of these participants had borrowed cell phones from their family members, and that's what they used to communicate. So in order to be able to get hold of that person, you needed to go through a relative. So that on its own was a big problem and inconvenience. Um, so we provided um, cell phones to all the participants. And then in this group, that we currently have at seven community networks from five different provinces within the country. And we have six um, languages that are represented, official languages that are represented within the group. So with English being the medium of communication and the method of um, instruction, there was um, a bit of a challenge for participants who have no higher learning um, experience. And so what we did in that case is we allowed for the use of home language. Um, we reinforced and reaffirmed that it is OK to use your home language. And we found translators within the room. So um, that was uh, challenge number two of many. Um, and also, one of the biggest things that we um, picked up was uh, developing interest in interacting with technological devices uh, for the female participants. And this was actually one of the biggest challenges as most of the female participants would wait for all the male, their male counterparts to first fiddle with the technology before they could um, uh, 
go on and start using the, the devices or trying to see what they can do. So we encourage a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning and we divided people into smaller groups and that is where people got comfortable with the technological devices and um, they started sharing their experiences um, and their knowledge. The other thing that I would like to point out, uh, which is the last one, <coughs> looking at time is the development of tribalistic cliques as well as the tribalistic um, stereotypes. So this is where we started uh, bringing in phrases that are in different languages which would be used within the lessons. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as I said earlier, my name is Harira Wakili. I work with Center for Information Technology and Development, CITAD in Nigeria. Um, Connectivity issue is one of the big challenges in Nigeria is facing, most especially in the northern part of Nigeria, where, the, where um, community are being, uh, rural communities are being faced with challenges of being connected. Not only connectivity, but also um, issue of education. There is less um, um, access to education, digital education in our, most of our communities. So it has been one of our aim to bridge the gender, the digital marginalization, um, along line the gender digital marginalization in our country, because um, we are being in a situation where whereby um, our women are being marginalized not only in the rural community but this um, the issue of gender digital marginalization is everywhere and um, I think most happened in the rural part because of um, like lack of access to education lack of access to awareness in our most of our communities on the importance of being connected as community so um, one of uh, the things with one of the key issue we focus during the school of community networks in Nigeria is to um, create more awareness to people on the importance of being part of the community networks um, development and as well as um, giving women the chance to participate in this piece um, one of the things uh, we, 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 we highlight during the school is um, be able to give the space to them and give the sense of ownership as one of the key things to approach the communities. Because the moment we, we, we give the sense of ownership to those communities, um, the, the more we have their responses and the more we have their interests in our activities. So the School of Community Networks, um, uh, we held the first School of Community Networks in 2021, which whereby we have experts that um, help us in developing the the um, the curriculum of the schools, uh, which is mostly around the area of um, technology development, because most of the communities, I think, uh, out of three, out of seven communities, only two we can say are very uh, capable of. Um, we can say they are very prepared when it comes to technology development. So we have to focus on making the part the, the participant of the school. Um, more um, lighting, more enlightened, and have more knowledge on on technology development, as well as um, sustainability develop sustainability development. So we, one of the key um, important thing we discuss during the school is how the communities can manage, runs and manage the community networks after we after maybe we have no funding or no donor that will come in and give us those kind of supports. So um, we try to have um, a key to. Um, to uh, pace of the school, which is online, because we, we meet, um, we do a physical school online. School and mentors in all of the seven micro organizations uh, I forget to say that we were working with seven micro organizations in Nigeria four in Abuja in the rural part of Abuja one in Kaduna and two in the rural part of Bauchi so um, we try to connect um, these uh, seven micro organizations <coughs> with volunteer mentors that keep on mentoring their activities after the schools and uh, the volunteer mentors were the one reaching out to we have each volunteer mentors that are very close to each community who are like uh, pay a kind of monthly visit to the communities to to check on what they are doing and to support them in the areas of advocacy, areas of sustainability, technologies, and 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 other relevant issues that that are happening in the community. So I think um, the, the second thing I think one we what, what we can call our what we can say our challenges with regard to women participation. Um, the first school we have we don't have much uh, application from women because um, there's this issue of. Uh, digital gap 
apart from digital gap, um, the cultural norms in, in our part is also supporting uh, um, women not to participate in, in all of this issue. So I think um, the first uh, the first call of the participation of women was so terrible for us because we couldn't have more women to come to participate, more women to apply, even without even after giving them chance, calling them, um, uh, calling the mentors, some of the people in the community to to kind of having uh, a kind of inter a lighting talk to, to the women in the community and as they and told them the importance of uh, being part of the of, of the movement. But we still have less participation from women. So the second school we, we take another strategy which is um uh, working together with the first um, participant of the school to to have a kind of um, weekly sessions with the with the people with the women in the communities as well as uh, like um, elders in the community because we believe that at some point the elders of the community play a vital role in discouraging women to come out due to cultural norms and and, and all of that so um uh, the second school was a very success for us because we have uh, a kind of 50 50 participation from both women and men and the women um, participated actively even though we, we face challenges of women being outspoken during the school but we, we, we learned that after the school after the first the physical school um, the the interaction from women the calling the sending text message individual text message asking some questions so we, we, we believe that um, we need to do another thing differently which is um, having a group which is um, mainly for women uh, whereby we, we create sensitization in the group for women to like yeah if you have a question go to the group and act um, um, interact with other men to to see that like to to see that people uh, have a learning session together so i think uh, this is one of the things uh we do and we did um a, a, a session on gender and community networks whereby um, even the men feel that at some point they are contributing to not supporting women to participate. Um, I heard uh, one of the uh, students in the school um, confess to that um, even the timing they give during meetings contributed to women not having that interest because uh, at so, at sometimes they will fix time, they will fix meeting at night which is not favorable for women and women will not be allowed to come out and participate. So um, um, the, the conversation, the interactive conversation we have give us the opportunity to have them to Together and the opportunity to understand their differences and what they are doing um, to, to what what they can do differently to support each other in terms of being um, participating in terms of participatory. Um, in terms of participating, and I think going to our challenges, the, the, the challenge, most of the challenges we face is regard to participation of women. Um, the men are always at the forefront. The men are always outspoken. The men are always ha always have this interest. But at some point, the women feel intimidated by these men. So w w one of the things that we do to 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 um, to, to overcome the challenges is uh, bringing another approach, which is the School of in Feminist Internet that we are doing, which is about supporting women to, to participate in the decision-making processes, um, taking women through the internet governance-related issues, and encouraging them to, um, to speak for themselves, and also take care of the issue of um, um, gender-based violence, which we think um, is one of the issues that also um, make women not to participate in the internet so we have a series of radio discussions uh, whereby we call on women women that have that uh, that we can see as an influencer women to serve as a source of inspiration to women in our rural parts of community because we believe that radio is one of the things that most women uh, in the rural community uh, like have access to so we we, br we bring out um women we, we, we most of the sessions we have all our radio sessions we have is about um about enlightening women uh, we bring more um, this, uh, women to participate and also encourage more women to come out in the community. And, uh, uh, and last, the last thing is uh, uh, in our challenges, it regards to language. Most people in the rural part of the community um, don't have access to, um, don't have much access to um, education whereby they can they, like so during the sessions we we try to see that we make it to in a local content which which is very good um, approach that we take because um, the first day we started the school was um, the session was mainly in English and we see the, from their faces there's this uh, lack of um, understanding and interest is is not much in there so after the school we have a, after the first session and the, the first day we have a session whereby um, we we, we we realize we have a, a kind of question and answer session with them. So most of them complain that um, if the session will be in a local language, like, yeah, we, they can have a fully understanding of what 
um, uh, the uh, the school is all about looking at uh, all the technical uh, looking at the technical sessions that we have so if uh, if it will be translated in the local language it will be very good for them to understand so I think we did that we take that approach uh, throughout the school um, almost all the session we try as much as we can to make it in the local content and uh, I think that uh, and that is also what we do, we, what we did uh, in the second school, which is um, using the local content. And the women were so like we, from their faces, we like I'm um, from their their responses, uh, the evaluation of the school. We we, we have uh, a very good um, uh, out. We have a very good. Um, the responses was very good, and we, we begin to to see where we have lapses, and we make sure that we cover those lapses during the online piece of the school. Thank you. Um, thank you, Harira, and uh, Neil, for that presentation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so for myself, uh, I'll talk about our situation in uh, in Kenya. Um, so the school is uh, run by a community network called Tinapanda Net, which uh, was the, is the first community network uh, in, uh, in Kenya. And uh, uh, the community network's goal was to provide affordable internet access uh, for the community and really emphasize more uh, on the con connectivity being for, by, and with the community. And so um, this, uh, the focus areas that... Um, the the Tunapanda Net uh, focuses on is uh, first of all com community connectivity, uh, where we endeavour to use the human centred design approach in uh, engaging the community so that the connectivity is autonomous, as well as uh, digital inclusion that looks looks at after access. Um, um, in providing meaningful access to the community. So this really sets a basis on the National School of Community Networks that Tunapana Net leads, simply because from our experiences and realities, uh, it really um, it really shapes how the community network uh, engagement uh, and efforts are uh, um, are brought together uh, in, in terms of um, the, the trainings that we've been conducting. So for the National School, what uh, what we've done as a school is um, we have really used the, the training guide that was provided uh, while we're starting the, the whole concept of Kenya National School, and that really um, strength str str uh, it really under, underscores the importance of participatory action uh, research where um, at first when we started the school it was more on scenario building where we invited the community network that we had mapped out which was seven initially uh, to just understand what is the training needs uh, so that we are not um, we are not taking down information uh, information to the community but it's it's a co-creation process with the community network members so here just understanding what are the challenges what are the values of the different community networks that we wanted to engage with and then uh, so that was uh, our first iteration of the school um, we had seven community networks and now we have 11 community networks and it's still the same process understanding what are the training needs of, of the different community networks to really curate a program that speaks to their needs and then the next phase is the same phase where we just uh, we engage the CNs in a series of conversations and surveys to analyze um, to analyze and, and curate the, the training uh, with them and also uh, mapping out who are the experts in this space who are able to provide uh, information and provide um, provide training with regards to the, these areas that we, we have identified. For example, for uh, this this school, uh, the one uh, for this year, the second iteration, we mapped out three uh, key areas that we worked around um, and um, these areas we define them as community of practice uh, that is the network and infrastructure just learning on uh, what it takes to des uh, design and deploy a network um, and another area uh, was on um, sustainability what it takes to uh, sustain a community network and lastly on local content creation uh, how can community networks create content that reflects their their realities in in the in the different regions that they're they're at, 
And just to uh, also uh, highlight is that the community natives we are dealing with are, are of different uh, categories. So uh, we have starting community networks. So those are just emerging community networks, people who would want to start a community network. And then also we have uh, already existing community networks. So we try to create a space where there's a lot of learning exchange and peer exchange. And how you'd see our trainings um, are very, we try to bring the concept of community even in our trainings. So you would find um, in our virtual mentorship, around finding in, on ground with regards to the different elements, if it's network and infrastructure, how does that topology uh, look like and what are some of the challenges that they are facing. And then so that creates some sort of exchanges. And then we uh, have also learning exchanges which are, very, which are physical in nature where we take a different community of practice to go and uh, learn what different communities are doing on ground. So we'll take uh, this, the 11 community networks, for example, to a community network based in the rural area to just have a one week of sharing, a one week of designing a network or designing a hotspot that, uh, for that community. So, um, so that is uh, more now the acting phase where it's very hands-on and, and, and um, has like different layers, the virtual mentorship, the learning exchanges. And now we also have uh, the National School of Community Networks, which culminates the entire conversation and also bring about different stakeholders. Like for um, the, the just concluded National School of Community Networks, we had uh, stakeholders from the communication authorities, stakeholders from uh, um, we were very lucky to have a representative of UK DAP uh, digital access program also USF these are conversations that are very important to the CNs to just understand how they can plug into um, into this uh, these already existing strengths that, uh, and also just have the conversation flowing so that it's not community networks discussing and then someone taking it to uh, the people who are making decisions. It's, it's a conversation that is running between the community networks and the decision makers. Um, yeah, so some of the challenges that we have faced is, uh, for example, with regards to infrastructure. So we train this community network, especially for the emerging ones, on how to deploy a community network but when they go back to their communities then they don't have the necessary infrastructures the, the equipment to actually deploy that um, that community network so um, part of our um, part of our resolution going forward is to uh, figure out ways of resource resource mobilizing, especially for emerging community networks, and also leveraging on the already existing efforts, such as, uh, for example, now the Communication Authority of Kenya is um, is pledging to support 100 community networks in two years. So how can we leverage so that uh, this conversation don't, don't, don't just stop in the boardroom areas and uh, who is making them accountable to make sure that community networks that are emerging are able to learn from the capacity building that we are providing and also um, uh, are able to deploy their, their networks in their specific communities. Another challenge that we have faced is with regards to volunteer work and sustainability of the work team. So for, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've had two iterations of the school. And in these two iterations, we've had different, um, different community networks uh, bringing in di uh, different uh, team members. This is uh, a good thing in terms of uh, expanding the capacity of the, of the community network, but it's also, th there needs to be that sustainability of knowledge. So how, do, uh, communi how can community networks um, be able to uh, maintain this knowledge that they are getting from our sessions so that it's not it's not just given to the staff and then they leave. So how do we maintain, uh, how do we uh, incentivize this volunteer work and also make sure that uh, the people we are training, this knowledge uh, 
remains in the community network, this knowledge becomes beneficial to the community that they are serving. So they are serving. So those are those are some of our learnings and our reflections uh, with regards to uh, community networks uh, in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you, Rispa. Uh, I think I'd, I'd like to move to Adriana. Desculpa. Bom, bom, bom dia. É, bom, com relação à nossa escola de redes comunitárias da Amazônia, é, passamos por uma desafiante é, ação, atividades, né? mas também com muitos esforços e com parcerias colaborativas. E ao desenvolver esse trabalho, o projeto Saúde e Alegria, que já atua há 30 anos no interior da Amazônia, é, consegue trabalhar agora, fazer uma inovação de uma escola de redes, a primeira escola de redes comunitárias é, no interior da Amazônia. E ela... Ah, sim. Um, so, I'm going to share with you the information about um, the School of Networks in the, um, the Amazon. Um, we faced a lot of um, challenges, but we were able to build on partnerships. Partnerships were key. And um, my project, her project, <laughs> Health and Happiness Project, has been working um, in the interior in the in the more distant areas of the Amazon for 30 years now but now there is this innovation of creating a school of community networks isso e de forma híbrida né tanto online ou presencial é, conseguimos é, sair da nossa região do Pará e a gente começou a trabalhar em mais dois estados do norte Pará Amazônia Amazonas e Acre so because of um, adopting a hybrid modality, we were able to go and expand our work beyond the state of Pará, where we are based, and now we are, wor we are also working in two other states, Amazonas and Pará e Acre. A and Acre. E estamos agora em sete territórios, inicialmente, trabalhando com três aldeias indígenas, Puyanawa, Marajaí e Solimões, é uma rede de comunicação indígena chamada Rede Wairi, uh, um coletivo de jovens chamado Guardiões do Bem Viver, e o Grupo Formigueiro e também uh, o coletivo Águas do Cuidar. I don't think I'll be able to repeat all the names, but you got the names. But just to mention a little bit of the numbers and the types of organizations that you just mentioned, it's like uh, they are now able to work in seven territories, three indigenous um, villages. Um, they are working with one um, indigenous community network and one group of indigenous youth. E aí nós desenvolvemos um trabalho, né, de, de um trabalho co-criativo de modelos metodológicos, de ações sociodigitais e ambientais e de incentivo ao protagonismo das mulheres e de jovens. So they co-created a new methodology that looks at social digital um, aspects. They also bring a lot of environmental concerns and also gender concerns. E o mais importante do, das ações do Projeto Saúde e Alegria é sempre trabalhar uh, inicialmente com metodologias de escuta. Então, a gente pode dar um exemplo de uma metodologia chamada Mandalas dos Saberes, onde é, buscamos, é, é, através desta metodologia, é, as comunidades elas puderam reconhecer e mapear o seu território, os seus desafios, as suas ações e suas estratégias de comunicação comunitária. Um, they use, so they use a lot of methodologies that focus on listening um, and, and, and collecting from the community. So they have one that is called like the circles of knowledge. And um, through that methodology, they are able to recognize and map um, um, not only the territories, the, the, the challenges that they face, but also the strategies that they have been using. 
E também uma outra característica muito peculiar do projeto Saúde e Alegria é ensinar numa perspectiva de Paulo Freire, a partir do seu contexto, é, da sua realidade. E usamos também uma essência de trabalho metodológico, a arte circense. Trabalhamos com circo a partir da, da, dos princípios da ludicidade, da arte educação e da comunicação. Um, they also, uh, one main characteristics of their work is also to work from the perspective of Paulo Freire, um, that is a, um, a, a thinker, uh, a Brazilian thinker in terms of education, and he really focused on learning uh, from the realities on the ground, so people would learn from their own realities. And then they also use a lot of circus methodology, so they use a lot of like lud lud ludicus. Ludicus. Does that word exist in English? But like, a, it's about like entertainment and and other um, um, strategies using like circus as 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 a methodology. É, e aí agora a partir desse dessa dessa escola de escola de redes comunitárias começou de forma online, né, dentro de um contexto de pandemia e mas conseguimos realizar e estamos na terceira já formação presencial com os alunos. Então já tivemos três é, encontros presenciais. Um aconteceu no Fórum Amazônico Social. O segundo aconteceu em Santarém mesmo com uma oficina tecnológica é, usando a tecnologia Herbis. É, para contextos de territórios mais remotos, né? E também a gente começou a vai estar tá realizando agora em dezembro a terceira formação presencial, também trabalhando com oficinas de tecnologias apropriadas. So they started online because of COVID, but now they are in the third edition of a in-person um, capacity building. So they had one. Uh, an initial one as part of the Amazon Forum, um, but now they are organizing technological workshops using the Hermes technology for distant uh, territories, and this is the same one that they will apply now in December. Sim, e conseguimos também nesse curto tempo, né, desde 2021, é, conseguir instalar uma antena para uma rádio é, de uma aldeia indígena chamada Aldeia Solimões na reser reserva é, Tapajós Arapiuns. E estamos agora no momento de mentorias, de projetos, né, onde cada território vai realizar é, um projeto né, de redes comunitárias é, em sua localidade. So they just installed an antenna for a community radio in an indigenous village um, that is part of a protected territory. And now they are going to start a project where they each each of these territories, indigenous territories where they are working, they will work on one specific um, community network project. E os principais desafios, né, enfrentados na Amazônia é a questão territorial, que é muito gigante, muito dimensional o nosso território amazônico e suas particularidades. Então, um dos principais desafios foi a, a conectividade, né, principalmente nesses espaços nos territórios de rios e florestas, né, mais distantes do centro, e também a logística de fazer esses encontros presenciais é, com os alunos de sete territórios. Um, so the, the first challenge, now she's going to share the challenges, and the first challenge relates to the territories where they are working because um, the Amazon is really, really large, so everything is really distant. You have to use rivers, you have to go through forests, so that um, brings a lot of challenges and also lack of connectivity. So that's like they, they have to work um, through all of those challenges. E as lições que aprendemos, né, o que estamos aprendendo sempre e continuamente, é que precisamos nos avizinharmos, não sei se vai ter esse conceito, é, no sentido de sermos mais colaborativos, de conhecermos os nossos vizinhos, não, é? É, não só lá da, do território amazônico, mas também da América Latina. Né? Então, é, é consolidar as redes comunitárias para que a gente possa realmente potencializar a nossa cultura amazônica, né? é, especialmente aquela, aqueles territórios que sofrem muito mais ameaças é, ambientais e também os seus meios de vida tradicionais. 
I am Milk. From um, lessons learned, so. Yeah, that one is difficult. Um, <laughs> so we really need to <laughs> work closely with our neighbors and, uh, and, and learn more and work closely with our neighbors. That's really important, uh, not only within the Brazilian Amazon, but the Amazon region more broadly, within the neighboring countries as well, countries as well because it's really key to protect the Amazon culture. Um, these are territories that are often um, subject to attacks. Um, there's a lot of um, um, issues concerning this territory, so there's also this aspect, and um, I think that's it. <risos> e também é, o que aprendemos de lição é que através de nossas metodologias da ecologia, da perspectiva freiriana, da, dos princípios do software livre, né, de usar é, tecnologias livres e apropriadas, é, é, isso ajuda a nos compreendermos melhor que tipo de tecnologias devemos utilizar para para nosso contexto amazônico, né? E especialmente para que possa é, fortalecer essa comunicação comunitária, sua cultura, identidade e seu território. So this, the use of these methodologies that she mentioned before, and also the idea of like a free software, all of these methodologies have really helped us to think what are the specific types of technology that we need to use and bring to the work in the territories uh, with the idea of promoting community communication, but also protecting the culture um, and, and strengthening the communities themselves. E para finalizar, é termos buscarmos mais parcerias locais é, que fortaleça os projetos comunitários né é, de cada território e também buscar novos recursos como editais focados na sustentabilidade numa economia sustentável numa infraestrutura e sempre de acordo com as necessidades de cada território so the, the, the last lesson learned is about um, seeking further partnerships. So they really want to identify more um, community groups with whom they can work, but also to look for uh, opportunities for funding for that could really allow them to work on these issues, but really having a look at um, the community economy, com the economics of the community and the infrastructure that is really um, adapted to the needs of the community. E precisamos também participar de mais formações contínuas, é, tanto a equipe da, que, que, da Escola de Redes do PSA, quanto também é, alunos, né, que, que a gente possa ter mais oportunidades de conhecermos outras realidades também e sairmos de fora assim, da Amazônia para que a gente possa compreender é, melhor dentro do nosso território. So um, the, the, the last point is really the need for continuous capacity building, not only of the team themselves, but also of, the, of those participating in their school. And they really feel that it's important to, for them to focus on the Amazon region to go beyond and, and have um, learn more and exchange more with people in other contexts so that they can um, have more ideas and bring those back to their own context. See. E fortalecer os grupos de jovens e de mulheres amazônicas, né, para fazer com que elas é, percebam a, a sua realidade, compreendam é, melhor suas leis, seus projetos, é, e que elas é, possam é, entender-se como guardiães protetoras da, do seu território de floresta de rios. So, um... <coughs> It, it's also important to work with um, groups of youth and women um, from the Amazon so that they can and, and, and work with them so that they can see themselves as protectors of their territories, of their rivers, of their forest. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think there are many. Uh, things that are already mentioned, that the COVID pandemic out, uh, outbreak reveal a huge uh, gap in many different areas, I think in, also in Indonesia, not only in digital divide, but also development gap in very uh, broad sense. 
and uh, yeah, people in rural areas in uh, remote places got uh, multiple impact on that. And in Indonesia, uh, the challenge of digital divide um, coming with number of problems from very huge geographical uh, challenges like in Amazon, uh, electric uh, supplies, um, devices, and so on. So in Indonesia, uh, we uh, develop a school of community network with a prototype in uh, indigenous community in West Java in around 2019. And then based on the evaluation on that, we started to develop a training uh, programs with uh, guidelines from APC. Uh, so we start the whole thing in 2020. And then from there, we develop a, a, a advisory group in 2021. And we develop curricula uh, that are focusing on brain, brainware, software, and hardware with the integrations with policy and regulations, technical capacity building, as well as uh, various utilization in regards to meaningful connectivity. And the School of Community Network itself was launched, launched during the rural ICT camp in 2021. And then the first uh, training on trainers is uh, organized in early 2020. 22nd, and we release like a, a, a handbook that to make it uh, more easy and accessible with a specific framework how to make um, community network legal, safe, secure, uh, affordable, and meaningful, especially for people in rural areas and remote places that aim to be to increase the quality of life, especially for people that has no uh, access to internet. And we use a specific approach, uh, we call it 5L. It has to be low tech, the technology has to be accessible, low energy, because in many different places in remote areas, there are very limited in, uh, source of um, electric uh, supplies. It has to be easy to maintain, so low maintenance, low learning curve, people very uh, has to be uh, have access and easy to understand and to learn, as well as local, local support. And we also have uh, many different meaning uh, learning experience because we somehow understand that community network mostly context specific by nature. So it, it can be different from one another. So the implementation of community network need to be uh, focused on research and observation on the needs and the rights of community. And secondly, meaningful access is celebrate multiplicity in micro scale. So local community has to find their own way to deploy and learn what is com um, community network uh, that are relevant for their uh, daily life. In Indonesia, together with civil society, uh, we develop multi-stakeholder approach, uh, especially for policy advocacy with specific needs for long-term capacity building, digital literacy, special license for uh, community network development, including tax incentive, because most of community network are not, not for profits. And uh, at the moment, the, co uh, the community network development still has a long way to go, but I think it gives a new hope in addressing digital divide challenges, both in local and global context. And uh, in the end, we somehow learned that community network strong foundation is basically on the network of people, open knowledge and technology. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you all, and um, it's really great that you brought out um, clearly the challenges, um, and you can see lots of similarities, access to technologies, uh, language, devices, as well as women participation. Um, and also quite commendable to all the, the schools of community networks as to how um, you are adaptive and flexible and learning together with the community. So quite uh, great to hear about uh, collaborations, for example, with different territories, uh, development of um, open source technologies, uh, even buying cell phones uh, uh, for community members, um, and all aiming towards strengthening uh, communities. Now to the next question, and this is I'd like to build up as to uh, from uh, Gustav's point around low tech, uh, low energy, um, low maintenance, low learning curve, uh, and low tech um, and local support, uh, which are I think are quite a, a good framework around which uh, we could propose even some of the um, of, of the public policy making around how we build capacity for for local communities. So my question is, how then do we use the lessons that you have learned from Indonesia uh, to be able to design uh, public policies? Yeah, well, 
um, we are very lucky that we are growing in the right ecosystem uh, together with APC, with the support we, uh, from uh, FCDO on the digital um, access program. We can exchange knowledge and experience and see what it's work and what is not. And somehow, uh, because what I mentioned before, that the uh, um, um, community network is always context specific by nature. So there will be a different approach, but maybe similar fr framework. So uh, from there, uh, I think uh, it is important to make things uh, open. And there are no such thing as one policy that fits for all. So I think it is important that we can exchange knowledge and experience with the Amazonia, with friends in Africa, making good documentations and make sure how to make this knowledge bank accessible for a lot of people in, in many different places. Because I do believe that community network is not only a, not a single term. It's, it it, it represents a very uh, diverse approach and ideas. And I think the, the, the people in local ground is the one who have the solutions. Um, thank you. And I'd like to open up to the rest of the panelists if you have any intervention uh, with regards to how the lessons you've learned can be used to inform public policy. Yes, okay. and we have five minutes, so. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I, I just realized I didn't uh, speak on the lessons that we learned. Um, maybe just briefly also share. Um, so one of the lessons that we learned was the need to demonstrate models that create access in the country. So there's need of uh, really documenting good workers, good, good, good stuff, I said. Um, of course, to exchange with other CNs within the region, within the, the globe, but also to uh, have the exchange within the country so that if when new CNs are coming, there's already um, there's already structures, there's already something that is replicable that they can use to start their own community network. I'm talking more on a curriculum, maybe a curriculum for community networks um, uh, in the country. And then also uh, another lesson that we learned was, as, as you're saying, that CNs are for by and with the community. It's critical to embody the, uh, the sense of community. And so that um, um, just um, high strengthening the aspect on local, using local language, as uh, has been talked about uh, with um, other, my, the other panelists, um, having curriculum that can also be simplified in other languages so that it's so easy for other community networks to also use and also using different pedagogies uh, while training for example I like what uh, um, what is uh, uh, what is happening and uh, with P PSA using different ways of training not necessarily just class but finding out what are uh, what is uh, what can the community um, yeah, what can the community uh, use to learn? For, uh, so if it's theater, if it's uh, circus, if it's entertainment, if it's uh, um, learning by the by uh, learning by the tree. So finding different ways to to really uh, drive uh, the concept of community networks with the community. Because of time, I'll I'll, I'll stop there so that others can share. Thank you. Okay. Um. My addition to what Gustav and um, Rispa are saying is that the approach of skills transfer as well as mentorship um, in giving or in imparting knowledge and skills to the participants that we have in the school um, through is part of infra, um, capacity building, which um, at this point in South Africa, we're not relying on the government to do that. So because we, as the School of Community Networks, are able to impart these skills um, to the community, for the community, um, that goes a long way. Thank you. And I think for us, um, is about uh, looking at uh, the way um, lack of um, political will is um, in Nigeria and we believe that um, building the capacity of the communities will also help in in achieving um, most of the goals um, and by engaging other relevant stakeholders. Um, 
ongoing in, in, in uh, ongoing discussion is currently on in, in with uh, CTAD uh, together with other regulatory bodies uh, with private sectors on how we can we can we can build the capacity of these communities in Nigeria so um i think we, we had a conversation about collaborating with um infratel africa and other relevant stakeholders to see that both actors and non-actors stakeholders to see that um, we we work um, toward building the capacity of, of, <coughs> of the micros and also taking them back to to to, to where um, th this infrastructure are because we believe that there are other community networks that was that was owned by Infratel Africa in in our region and we are working towards connecting those micros to those um, community networks so that their capacity can also be like they can have the practical uh, capacity pra capacity the capacity will be built practically on those aspects um, vamos seguir três pontos principais aqui que eu coloquei uh, primeiro que a importância de se reconhecer é e ter uma identidade de pertencimento pelas pessoas das comunidades amazônicas. Né? É importante que elas tenham, compreenda a sua cosmovisão amazônica né? e que elas possam é, é entender que todos esses processos de conhecimentos eles devem ser garantidos a presentes e futuras gerações. So, so she wants to highlight three points. The first of them is that uh, it's really important to recognize that uh, its identity is key in the region. Um, it's about belonging to a very specific community that has very specific a very specific worldview, um, and that any capacity building has to be considered in the in the long term generational uh, sense. É, segundo que as políticas públicas, elas precisam, no caso da Amazônia, é, elas precisam ser regionalizadas. Né? É preciso que a gente fomente facilidades de acesso e logística para soluções baseadas em energias limpas, como, por exemplo, a energia fotovoltaica. So any public policy has to be regionalized. That means that it has to be taught specifically for the particularities of the Amazon. So for example, um, the access facilities have to be taught given the territory, the logistic aspects, and also the use of uh, clean uh, energy solutions. E a necessidade urgente de fomentar e implementar modelos alternativos é, de enfrentamento ao aos deveres da, do, do Estado, né, que é ineficiente e que deve ter, ter esse direito, as pessoas devem ter esse direito a, a implementações que realmente buscam produzir resultados e mudanças é, nos seus territórios. Okay. So it's also urgent to, there's a, an urgent need to rethink how the state looks at its responsibility and its obligations in relation to securing rights, especially of those people living in more distant regions um, in, in, in the Amazon and thinking about alternative ways in which um, services and rights, um, like connectivity and, and, and how you can implement those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Paula. I'd like to open up now. In, are there any questions uh, from the room? Yep. So because of time, I think I'll just take those three. Uh -huh. One, two. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Said. I'm from Ethiopia, from Public University, University of Dabarahan. Uh, my first question is uh, for uh, this capacity building, what are the target groups for your uh, local capacity building? Are they public schools or private companies or institutions? The second one, <coughs> when we work for con connectivity or scalability, but 
there is another problem which comes together with this. I mean, internet is becoming a place for, for violence or abuse, especially for women and children. Then, therefore, what is your effort to meet, mitigate this problem and safeguard the connected community, especially the children and women? Uh, the third question goes to Indonesia one, uh, our, our brother from Indonesia, uh, to ensure uh, infrastructure accessibility. Uh, most of countries in global size have, uh, in global south have a problem of uh, uh, ensuring accessibility, especially in, in telecom or uh, internet infrastructure. Yeah, because uh, people living in rural area, they are. Uh, live in in fragmented way. Therefore, most of the telecom companies are accumulated in towns where they can get profit, and they are not willing to go to the rural area because uh, if they invest highly, a costly infrastructure in rural area, they can they can't get the return they want. Therefore, what is like the go your government effort or or like institutions like you? in your country if we are to ensure uh, infrastructure such that internet is accessible to all community. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very much, Josephine. Talan Sultanath, Internet Society, Kyrgyzstan chapter. I wanted to start by thanking APC for uh, advancing the cause of community networks globally. We in Kyrgyzstan learned a lot from the partner community networks around the world, Latin America, Africa, Asia, Indonesia, Kenya, Tunapanda, we visited. And um, we've launched a couple of community networks in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, the last one was uh, in a village called Zardali. And what was interesting, we uh, mentioned here the capacity building that we provide to local communities. What we also were really impressed with is local communities can do capacity building to us coming from you know, capital cities. So when we launched this in community network, the in ingenuity of local community was really impressive. The very first thing they did was uh, when they had internet connectivity is to send messages to the central government, uh, video messages saying that you know we are in this village, we have no road, we have no electricity, so uh, you need to pay attention to us. So this was and central government did start helping the, this community. Second was interesting how people started using it for e-commerce. We didn't, like it was local invention. Uh, just uh, farmers would bring their animals to the Wi-Fi hotspot and just use the connectivity saying that this is my cow, I'm selling it. I don't need to go to a village which is two days drive and uh, they are doing like local e-commerce. And one really uh, good lesson that we learned is that uh, this uh, uh, local uh, Wi-Fi hotspots become um, safe uh, areas for girls villages. The experience hotspot and uh, uh, learn uh, through internet. Uh, so, um, in conclusion, I wanted to mention that uh, Carlos mentioned about this uh, community networks learning repository. I think this is going to be a really uh, useful uh, instrument, and we in Kyrgyzstan also producing a uh, guidebook for connecting communities to the internet for uh, GIGA. It's a UNICEF ITU initiative of connecting all the schools to the internet and would be really happy to share it uh, when the repository becomes available too. Thank you. Thank you, Talent. Uh, hello. This is Ashrafur Rahman from Bangladesh School of Internet Governance. Uh, as all of you know, uh, the youth have more opportunities to contribute for the IG processes. But I think uh, it's my opinion, uh, especially for the uh, whose young community live in the South Asian continent, and continent they are the less focused, uh, especially uh, bo though uh, they, they are trying to contribute more. So I think we need more cooperation for that uh, continent because we are uh, talking about the empowerment for the youth but uh, for the capacity building if we cannot connect the whole globe maybe uh, we, we cannot uh, achieve our goal thank you thank you
Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Michael Cañares. I'm a researcher uh, studying uh, data, digital, and social inclusion. Um, at the outset, congratulations to APC and its partners for this fascinating body of work. This is really tremendously helpful. And I'm already scrolling through the guide that you've produced, actually. So my question is about something which I think is uh, uh, which something which I think is not mentioned about in a lot of the presentations. In the work that we did in in the research work that we've done in uh, Southeast Asia, also in in Africa, we've seen, for example, that capacity building processes and development activities at the community level does not really solve the underlying inequality that underpins the digital divide and the, ad the unequal access to and benefit from digital transformation. So I think my question may be too much of an ask, but I would just like to ask whether there were instances in the past that community networks are able to challenge existing oppressing structures uh, that marginalize a certain sectors of society, like the women, indigenous peoples, and rural and the rural poor, for example. And I would like to learn about these stories because this would be interesting. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think we'll, we'll take those questions. Um, first, uh, we have the capacity building uh, target groups. And for that, I would like Neo to address the first question, please. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> In the context that we are uh, working within, um, we honestly do not have any target groups because we realize that these uh, communities are based in um, rural communities where a hospital is kilometers away. Um, schools are also far apart. So uh, we've created, uh, in Zenzeleni, in Mount Kosi, in the Eastern Cape, we've created hotspots um, at people's homes. They've allowed for us to do that because they understand the vision and they understand um, that internet access is a need for them. So some of these hotspots are placed at um, the headman's house, for example. This is where a lot of people come and gather and have their meetings. Um, there are also some rural um, representatives and leaders that are in the community and they have allowed for their homes to be treated as, as hotspots. So um, target groups, it would be very difficult to exactly pinpoint where exactly we would like these to be in rural settings such as Mangosi. And it would work more in urban spaces um, for some of the community networks that we have in the school. So I hope that has answered your question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you. I think Rispa will also take that, uh, the question on target groups and then Harira on uh, there was a question on um, safeguarding, yes. Okay, so Harira and Adriana will take those two, and then we'll get to Gustav. Um, thank you. Um, so for in Kenya, uh, the target groups are uh, uh, organizations. So already existing uh, organization that would want to uh, start a community network because uh, uh, we work with commu um, already uh, communities that already exist. So it's not us going to start a community network. It's plugging into already existing efforts. For example, if you're in a rural area, you're dealing with farmers, how does, uh, if uh, we get how does connectivity add into that? And in most cases, how we've gotten such uh, target groups is by referrals. Uh, so from the trainings that we had seven community networks at first, uh, there were referrals to other organizations who saw the need to also be part of uh, this uh, the, the, the capacity building to just understand how uh, they can also um, have the impact to their different communities. Thank you. So um, one of our main focus is supporting, promoting um, digital access and also um, encouraging women to be part of, of the internet. But at the same time, we realize that 
a lot of women don't feel safe and a lot of women were being deprived from using the internet is either by their husbands or by their parents due to the um how our people frame the internet as uh, 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 that is like see the internet uh, links to um, immorality due to the things that are happening in, on social media and there's this limitation of internet by our people most people when you talk about internet they limit their thinking to social media only so one of the things that we do is um, when this, the feminist internet school came on board, we tried to build the capacity of these women on how to protect themselves online. So we have, um, apart from um, talking to them about the internet governance related issues, we have a, set, a safety tips that we do, a session on safety tips that we do to women on how they can keep themselves online, on how they can report the, using the platforms, social media platforms. On, we, we also encourage them to um, report cases to the police and other bodies that, that, that can like that can that can help them to, to stop that kind of abuse and another strategy that we took um, is um, we try to have um, conversation with the victims of gender-based violence online where by, by they narrate them their stories about how they were able to overcome these challenges which was, which is serving as a way of encouraging others to to take um, safety measures and we're also trained on, on on not getting exposed to the side that are harmful to them and also how they can keep themselves killed online um, I think that's one of the things that we do and it, we also engage a, a radio discussion calling on the victims, calling on other people, calling on the um, uh, security agencies to talk about um, uh, um, the things that, uh, like t to talk about so many things that has to do with um, punishing those perpetrators online and what citizens can do to report those cases. I think that's one of some of the things that we are doing in that regard. Thank you. É, bom, respondendo, uh, acho que vou fazer uma, uma resposta só dessas, dessas questões que foram é, apontadas. Primeiro, assim, é, lá na, na Amazônia, nós, enquanto projeto Saúde e Alegria, é, trabalhamos muito como eu falei anteriormente, numa perspectiva freiriana, de Paulo Freire, é, onde nós aprendemos a utilizar as tecnologias, mas baseada no seu contexto real, no seu, na sua situação local. So, I'll try to reply to all of those questions in one answer. Um, in the Amazon, as I mentioned before, we really work based on a methodology um, that was developed by Paulo Freire that is really a perspective of learning about the local context and needs to think about the use of technology. E, então, trabalhamos nas comunidades que mais necessitam é, de serem atendidas de, de, e ter esse direito de políticas públicas que chegue até lá com uma conectividade né, e as tecnologias. Então, é, a nossa contribuição é fazer um trabalho de desmistificação das tecnologias. Né, é, da cultura digital, para que as pessoas elas possam compreender e praticar esse uso das tecnologias livres de forma crítica e reflexiva é, para que se possa combater a, a violência é, das mulheres, é, dos jovens, das crianças e, especialmente, também, né, tão importante quanto isso, a, a violência de, se, é, de ser ameaçados é, em seus próprios territórios, por mineradoras, por madeireiras, ile garimpo ilegal. Então, vários enfrentamentos que estamos aqui. Então, a gente tem assim, um potencial de jovens ativistas que trabalham com comunicação e mídia ativismo. Ai, quase que... Um, eu me empolgo, eu yeah. me empolgo. You diga que eu me empolgo para ele. She got excited, she's saying, <laughs> to answer. So, it's... Um, um, so she, what they do then, based on this methodology, is to really work with these more distant um, um, groups, these more distant communities, so that they can dis demystify um, the digital culture, so that they can really use, in a critical way, um, technology. And then they can use this technology to um, exercise their right to access public policies, public policies that normally don't get to their uh, territories. Second, they also
also <coughs> use that to face the violence that women face and the children face uh, in the in, in the offline context but they can use technology in that way but also address <coughs> online uh, violence and finally <coughs> they can use uh, technology also to face the violence that they face because of the attacks on their territories because all of these territories are being attacked by mining by cattling by deforestation so they can react to that by through the use of uh, technology and connectivity e utilizamos os princípios por exemplo do software livre da cultura hack que são conhecimento livre colaboração e liberdade pronto, pronto. Uh, we also use the principles of uh, free soft, um, open software that is um, collaboration repeat please <laughs> Colaboração, liberdade e conhecimento. Freedom um, and knowledge. Thanks. Okay, so uh, community network developments always needs a multi-stakeholder collaborations. We call it a total football approach, where we should involve government, business sectors, non-profit organizations, academia, tech communities, and diverse, group, diverse community group. And there is no easy way out. Capacity building and understanding has to be developed for each stakeholder, so we have to talk and discuss. And this is a long-term process, and there are no such thing as quick win. So it's almost impossible to develop community network one year, two years. It has to be planned in a long-term uh, process. For sustainability and scalability, it's also the same. Only we, we, we see that community network is need to seen as infrastructure that are dedicated to local communities and no expansions to larger group because it will compete with big companies corporations and so on and it's not it's not a war that we're going to win and community network infrastructure also need to be localized and contextualized business models that run by communities and invent by local communities and the last thing that is also for us is important that unintended consequences of internet and digital technologies like harmful content, violence, and so on, it is a, long, a, a lifelong learning process that need an ongoing capacity building, digital literacy, education, policy, uh, affirmative policy and regulations, law enforcement, etc., etc. So as long as we use the internet, the whole process are need to be embedded in our daily life. Thank you. Thank you all, and that brings us to the end of our session. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. It was great to have you. Uh, it's not easy to fill a room in the IGF, so many, many thanks for to have all the seats filled uh, to the end of the session. I'd like to thank all our panelists, Alessandra and Carlos, who joined us online, and here, Adriana, Neo, Harira, Rispa and Gustav for all your great contributions. I wish I could be able to add you more time, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we have to leave the room for the next session. And also, thank you so much, Paula, for, uh, for being our interpreter. We really, really appreciate. <laughs> Yeah, so I would like to remind you that uh, the CN repository will be launched soon. Uh, my colleague uh, Daniela is in the room. Um, if you'd <coughs> like to share your emails, um, and then she'll share more details with you. And I also invite you to subscribe to uh, the APC newsletter to receive more news uh, on community networks. So thank you once again. I wish you a pleasant stay in Addis, and all the best to the rest of the IGF. Just the people are starting to think.